Okay, so if you follow our YouTube shorts, we did a couple shorts about uh, DHCP and DNS and kind of explaining what it is. So if you missed it, essentially DHCP is the service that you can run that will hand out IP addresses on your network. And uh, we also talked about DNS, which is a service that translates, so like Google.com to their public IP address. You can have a public DNS server, and you can also have a private DNS server. So in this video, let's go ahead and build out a private DNS server, and I'm going to use my lab for fund network, and we're going to go ahead and create a, a DNS server using Microsoft Server 2019. If that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and stick around, and we'll go ahead and get this started. Oh, it's black burning tech, we're leveling up from networking paths to systems we trust. Let's break it down. Let's build it back together. We're learning right on track. All right, welcome back. All right, so we're here on the uh, 2019 server. This is a data center version, but it, you can run standard or if you have your other licenses, whichever works. Uh, I think this this service actually comes with pretty much all of them. So what we'll need to do is go ahead and click on the start menu, and then we'll need to pull up our server manager. And I'm gonna change this a little bit so that way I can do this. Okay, that looks pretty good on the recording side. Uh, so I can draw on screen right if we need to. Um, so you want to let this kind of start up and get everything going. Um, I do have a cert one issue, but I'll uh, I'll take a look at that one here in a little bit. But we'll come over here to manage. Click on that. Click add roles and features. So when you come here, this is the little dialog box it gives you. Go ahead and click next. We're going to install on this server. And then we're going to install in this server. And which services do we want to install? As you can see, there's a list of services, including Active Directory. This one doesn't currently have anything installed on it. This is just a lab server. But you can spin up whatever you need on it. Um, for example, in this example, we're just going to do D a DNS server, or a DHCP server, and a DNS server. Go ahead and click that. And if we wanted to add any of these additional ones, it would be that just as simple. Go ahead and click Next again. And this is some of the additional or, uh, services you can also have installed. Um, you normally don't want to mess with that one unless uh, what you're installing requires something additional. Um, dynamic, and it basically goes through and tells you what to note and what, what's important about it. Okay, so we're not going to really worry about that. And I'll tell you, go ahead and restart the server if it needs to. Um, the reason why they put this box in here is say if you're, uh, this is a production network, you don't want to, you're adding a service to a server, but yet you don't want to accidentally take it down because it's actually providing other services on the network. You don't want to accidentally uh, have it restart. I, if I remember right, these services do not require a restart. So I'm going to go ahead and pause. And as soon as this gets done, we'll go ahead and jump in. And, all right, so that got done, and I went ahead and closed it, and then I realized I wasn't recording. So um, let's go ahead and start building out our DNS server. So we can go ahead and do that in here, or we can just directly go over to the panel. I personally prefer to go into the panel because it's the old school way of doing it. So go ahead and go to your start menu on the server and just type in DNS. You should see a box like that says DNS. Go ahead and click on that. And let me change this back so I can zoom in. So this is the name of the server. I didn't really name it. Um, typically in a production, you would name it to something. So if you look at this, so if there's a lot of stuff here, and, and we're not going to cover everything in detail. But a forward lookup zone is what you're typically looking for. That's when you have a name and you want to map it to an IP address. A reverse is just the opposite of that. Maybe I have a name and I, or an IP address, and I want to know what that IP address gets mapped back to. Um, you can set up both of them. So if we double click here, it tells us we don't currently have a zone set up. So we'll right click, new zone, and then next. And this is talking about the different type of zones you can have. So maybe you're synchronizing with another server, or uh, that's what this, the sub ones are. But this is a primary zone, since this is a new one, uh, zone name. And I'm going to go to this, labforfun.org. All right, and then what do I want this to be? I'm just going to leave it the same. And then do, do I want to allow it to dynamically update? Uh, do not allow it, this, what this one is. Uh, what that means is, do you want it to automatically update based on certain criteria? Um, say this is an Active Directory server, typically it will want to uh, update. So the way, if your uh, computer changes names or different settings within Active Directory, we're not going to worry about that right now because this is just a static one. 
But if we look right here, and then we have labforfun.org. And so it creates like some basic ones. So it knows it's a name server. So it's asking who is the, the name server of it and who's the, the start of authority, which is who is the person that I trust the most. So that's the ones it creates by default. But let's say we want to host a web server. And most of the time it's www.whatever.com, for example. So like that labforfun.org. So if I wanted to do that, I come over here and right click and click a new A record and the name will be www and then I give it an IP address. So maybe I have a web server on my, on my network. Oops. Let's just say it's on to 40.2 and I know this is my server IP address. This is how I can get to that web page and then I can click add host and then it'll give you a notification down here that the record has been added successfully. So if I had a host pointed to this DNS server, so at this IP address of the server itself, then as my DNS server, like when you go in and look in your network settings and then gives you the option to set your uh, DNS servers, that's where you would do this. You'd point it there, or you can do it with DHCP, which we're going to do here in a minute. But this is how it's going to www. So anything at www.labforfun.org internally will go to this 192.168.40.2. Now that also applies to remote services. So maybe I have a branch office or a headquarters that has a different service out there. And I know that it actually goes to somebody to that public IP address for, for example, uh, say I have a remote server or I have some other application that's out on the internet. I could do the same thing that I could come in here and add another record. And then I could type in, um, say if I have a lab server, and uh, I know that that's going out on 52.5.5.1, for example. Um, my apologies if that's actually your public IP address, but essentially it's the same thing. So any server that's requesting DNS from this one, if it went to labserver.labforfun.org, it's going to try and go to this IP address. This is how the, the uh, that's how your computer knows where to go with the, the domain names that you type in, whether it's in a web browser or even if you're trying to remote desktop into something, that's how it knows where to go. Um, some of these subfields, if you ever look at this, um, come over here, the aliases, that's like a C name. So I already have one for www, but maybe I have something else that actually points to that. Instead of doing www, Maybe I could change this to, I know this is server two that hosts this. So I can change this. Oops, no, I can't. It will not let me. All right, so we'll just go ahead and delete www. And let's do this like this. So server two. So server two dot lab for fun will go to 192.168.40.2, for example. Okay, we know that's been added. So my server two is the one who actually hosts www on it. So maybe I want to add that service, but I don't want to come in here and create a bunch of A records and I got to keep track of it. Because if server two, if I were to change the IP address on server two, I don't want to go in and have to change every DNS record that's in here. So I can right click and come over here to CNAME and then I'll just do www org is what this will go to. And then I can browse. And then there's server two. So what this is saying is anything that goes to www.labverfund.org really goes to server org. So right now, anything that hits this will get sent here, but I can also change this. So like I said, maybe, maybe that server died and I have to change it to dot 21 for whatever reason. It's that easy to change that record. Now, this example, there's only one record, so it's not that big of a deal. But imagine you have a bunch of them. That's where it gets overwhelming. You can do this for anything internally. You can have it mapped to pretty much anything you want. Um, you, you just have to be careful because if you have stuff mapped wrong, it can sometimes break different services. Um, one area that I personally do is I, whenever I'm testing something out in like my network, I have a subsection that I'll test with. So if I come up here to an A record, for example, and say I'm messing with my internal proxy and I know I'm going to create a 
a lab one that I want to just just to see how well this actually does work. So, um, so maybe my proxy itself. So maybe my proxy itself is on 192.168.40. I don't know, 12 sounds good. So this is my actual record, for example. I don't want to mess with this because maybe everybody in my company or I'm using this for my own network, but I want to test out the pro my new proxy. So I, what I normally do is I can come over here and click add a new record and P-R-O-X-Y dot lab. So if you look at this, you can add a dot and then have like a subdomain in, with inside of it. So maybe you have a different branch or you have a management that area. You might want it like like this so you know. Or maybe this, maybe for my management of this is on a different IP. So MGMT, so proxy.mgmt.lab for fun. And I go to 192.168.10.5 for that. All right. And as you've seen, it, when I put that .mgmt, that's why I created the separate folder here, is because I made a subdomain of it. And you can add multiple subdomains to kind of help you keep track. So maybe you have portal dot whatever, and you have a bunch of other subdomains within that. This is a way for you to be able to help organize this. All right. So let's go ahead and jump out of this and start working on our DHCP server. All right. So then I just close that out and we'll go ahead and click on start DHCP. Um, these little boxes are known as Microsoft Management Console boxes. This is for those that have been in, in the Windows environment. They've been around forever. Um, but it's a good way of doing this. So right here, we're back to our server itself. Now we got the option between an IPv4 server or an IPv6 DHCP server. I'll just do an IPv4 one. And then, so when you open this up, sometimes you go, okay, well, there's so much stuff here. Where do I actually begin? So server options would be more like anything that hits all of your domains. So maybe you have um, a DNS name that you want that all of it to have. Uh, so your adapters have it. But typically, you'll come over here, right-click, do a new scope. Next. And I will, maybe I, this is my core network. And then where does this address range start and end? 192.168, yeah, 40. Dot, let's just say 200 to 192.168, 40. Well, this is a smaller network, so how many DHCP addresses do I really actually think I would need? Let's just do 40. So it'll only hand out 40 addresses for me. And the length right here, it's the subnet of the network, so it knows how big the network actually is. And I'm okay with that. Oh. And I just realized I did it back. an issue. And that's a good one to learn. So if you typo, um, so it knows that this end range needs is not the same as it's it's smaller than the start range. And I, I meant to put um, to 240. All right, and these are any addresses that I want to exclude. Maybe I have something that's already set there and I kind of don't want to mess with it. This is where this would be, or if I had like a just a big range and then I wanted to exclude certain things, that's what that would be for. How long do I want this to be valid for for the lease? Now, just remember that as we talked about in the YouTube short, it that your uh, that your uh, leases checks in every half. Half of whatever it is. So I'm going to set mine for four days. So it'll check in in two days. And then configure DHCP options now. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So this is, where's the router? So where's my default gateway so I, I can get out to the next hop? And so on this network, 2.168.40.1 is the router. Um, if you have multiple routers, you can technically put them in here. So that way it'll... You'll have extra ones, the parent domain. So maybe this is part of my labforfun.org. And then right here is my uh, the DNS one that we was talking about. So this one sees I have it set to 1.1.8.8 .1 .8 .8 on the server, but maybe I want it this one to actually 
handout. I'll go ahead and get rid of DNS or uh, Google's, but maybe I want to go ahead and use my internal DNS of this server, right? So 192.168.40. Uh, what did I set this server to? 254 is what I added this one to. I'll click add. It's going to validate and make sure it actually has a DNS server running on it because it wants to make sure that it can actually do it. Click next. Win server. We're not using a win server currently. That's more, you can add that in later on if you want. Um, do I want to activate the scope? So maybe I'm pre-staging this so that way I can turn it on later. Maybe I already have a, a DHCP server on my network and I don't want to interfere with it right now. I'm just getting stuff set up. So I'm going to click no right now because I actually do have a, since I actually do have a DHCP server currently set up on my network, that would be kind of bad. Um, if you have multiple ones running and it's not set up right, then yeah, you can definitely run into that. Nice part is from here, when uh, somebody does get a lease, you can click right here and you will see these leases. And then if you want to make a reservation, it's simple as just right clicking on it and reserving it. But you can also come over here to reservations and add this. So basically what a re reservation is, is if I see this MAC address, I want it to always get this IP address. Um, so maybe I want 201 to be um, Tim. And then I would set the MAC address right here, maybe a description just for my own notes of who, which Tim it is, maybe, or why it was set or who it was set by. And then you could have it set up. Um, typically, I just leave it on both and just click Add. And that's how you create a reservation on here. Uh, setting up a DHCP server is not really that difficult. And uh, it's pretty common. Uh, there's plenty of different options. So like we come back into the scope options, we can see those ones that it asked us are about already, but maybe we want to add more, configure more options. As you want, you see, there's all of these options you can add and there's even more. Um, and then you can even go into advanced level ones and then you can get super long details, but maybe, maybe you have a wireless LAN controller, you have to have all this uh, other options set up. That's where you would do that in. And uh, that's pretty much how you set up a DHCP server. All right, and that's how you set up a DHCP and DNS server without Active Directory. Um, adding Active Directory, it's fairly easy. It does the exact same thing, except for it helps you with your authentication. And we'll have a video on that coming up soon as well. But this is how you set up a basic DNS and DHCP server in a Microsoft server environment. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, be sure to click like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. It helps the channel and helps you stay informed with the other great content coming up. Thanks for watching.